I kind of, you know, you kind of do this anytime a president moves on, whether it's four years, eight years, whatever. But let's talk a little bit about some of the things that President Trump, <clears throat> excuse me, accomplished. And you, and you can see, if we're being honest with ourselves, which we should be, we always should be, you can see, you can see why the left, so much of them, their followers, obviously the media and the Democrats, but their followers, people who are, who are you know, politically leaning left of center, why they loathed this president so much. And it's not because of him. It's not because of his actions. That's what we're going to get into in a second, which is the exact opposite of how they should have felt. But you can see why. And it's because the mainstream media never celebrated his many, many accomplishments. And they weren't just accomplishments for conservatives. Some of them were. Getting three judges on the court. Getting, you know, they're getting, I think it was like 300 federal judges put in place. Lots of big accomplishments for conservatives, but tons of big accomplishments for all Americans. And they were never celebrated. They always went after him. And they kind of ushered in this new era. There's always been some level of confrontation with the president, but there's also always been more, I would say, of a, of a level of respect for the office, regardless of political affiliation, regardless of who was in there. That's how the past was. But this generation of media and where we have been these last four years is, is remarkable and not in a good way. They became extremely confrontational and not just kind of rude, but absolutely rude and aggressive to the commander in chief. Again, something we've not seen on, on that level ever before. Shouldn't have never been that way. Like him, dislike him, agree with him, disagree with him. You still treat the office with respect and you look at the good things that are happening there's good and bad with everything but they didn't do that so but you can see with this huge platform that they've got that we always talk about on the show this huge platform that they led by example in this case just a really bad one hate this person here's why you should hate this person he's this he's that and when most americans just listen to these same news networks read these same newspapers it's, it's dangerous what happens. And we saw it firsthand. Was he perfect? No. Does he have an ego? Yeah, hell yeah, he does. A big one. Was he presidential by D.C. standards? Not even remotely. I mean, like, literally. Not even close. But again, what everyone seems to forget is that's why he won. That's why America... Americans put him in office. And no one, I mean, all these networks that went after him so hardcore the whole time and will continue to for weeks on end because they don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know how to report the news. They just know how to bash President Trump. They're going to have to figure that out. But what they never did, for the most part, again, there's exceptions and everything, but for the most part, they never talked about why he's here. We hate this guy. He's awful. You should hate him too. But they never looked at, why is he here? Why is he here? And then as I was saying before, they didn't, and, and, and consequently, a lot of Americans never gave him credit for so many big successes. And I think that, I think that history is going to, as, as the title says, I think that the history books and people are going to look back real fondly on this presidency, this term. When you look at just what he did, if you can shut off all the noise of the mainstream media, including Fox in their early days when they were super, super behind him. Obviously, they're not now. And, and, and if you can shut off the noise from you know, further right conservative networks now as well, all of it should lead you to, there was some really good stuff done. There was some really good stuff done. I mean, think about it. This, this president, President Trump, accomplished as much with U.S. foreign policy as any president has. It was remarkable. Completely revamped how we did things in the Middle East. The Abram Accords were huge. They were epic. Very, very impressive. And will have lasting effect for decades upon decades if, if they're not screwed up now. Which it seems, from some early chatter, that 
that this new administration does not want to do that because they see like, wow, that was really impressive. He reimagined how we did things in the Middle East. Think of all the presidents in, in your life. Every president, every administration that's come through in your lifetime, whether you're young or old, has had that task on their plate. What's he going to do about Middle East, peace in the Middle East? And they've all tried. They've all tried. They've all tried the same plan, though, and just hoped that they would be the guy that got it done. Not understanding how cultures are there, not understanding how things work. But again, he reimagined it. And as a negotiator, as a businessman, he was the right guy for the job. Had an edge there, knew how to make things work. And he made progress that no one else has made. Is, is, is the Middle East solved? No. Newsflash, spent a lot of my adult life in the Middle East. It's never going to be solved. But there was progress made there that was not celebrated. And that was amazing. Multiple deals under the Abrams Accord. He also moved the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem which no one had the balls to do before, it was always pushed for, didn't get, which is funny because the libs always talk about how they hate war. Their hist- a lot of the history you know, goes against that, but they always talk about that. This president was one of the first and one of the few in recent decades who's not gotten us into any wars, reduced footprints in Iraq, Afghanistan, But again, not celebrated, not talked about. Made NATO members actually pay their fair share. You know, we've always footed most of the bill, even though the agreement calls for more from other places. We've just we've just gotten abused, used and abused. Said no, we're not doing it. Doesn't make fiscal sense. Doesn't make sense according to the agreement and the contracts. So we're not doing it. And he changed how that was done. It's not letting people take advantage of us. Those, those were all huge wins. And then just broadly speaking with foreign policy, we led, we returned to a peace through strength model, which has always worked for us. It's important. And you could say is required of us. We're the global hegemon. We're the big, we're the big guy on the block. That's what's expected of us. That's what's needed of us internationally. Keep things in check. Oh, don't do that. There will be consequences if you do that. If you do it this way, if you, if you just calm down for a second, we'll work with you. We'll help you figure this out. We're not going to do anything crazy unless you do something crazy. And it's worked. It's been, it's been remarkable how it's worked. He broke up NAFTA, crappy trade agreement. Even Biden saying the U.S. Uh, MCA is better. Other, tons of other great stuff in trade. The economy here, obviously, in the U.S., was legendary before the virus it was completely legendary but even after i mean you got to remember too the surges that we've seen even after the virus or during the virus whatever you want to say are are pretty damn impressive too the third quarter this past year was was a record during the virus so he did a ton there did a ton for minority communities the numbers prove it you look at unemployment you know, the jobs numbers, all that stuff. You look at the, the response and how he improved with all those different communities across the country in this election. Because there was real work done there. Not promises that you see in these Democrat stronghold states or, or specifically down to the city level where they've been telling these promises to these communities forever that do need help. There's a lot of communities that do need help. And they say, hey, we got your back because it's an election year. But we're not going to do anything. But trust us. And then nothing happens. And then they slam insults at conservatives, at other you know, groups, race or religion, what have you, as the elections draw near. And then they do the same thing again, rinse and repeat. And some of those cities, literally for 50, 100 years, have not even tried. Well, what, what, if, what if we try letting someone else have power? No, they haven't tried it. The results have been the same. Shocker. So he did a ton there. And you could say, most importantly, this, this won't be talked about in the history books. The Abrams Accord, some of this other stuff will be. His, his overall foreign policy was epic. But most importantly, what happened with this election 
is he forced DC politicians to expose who they really are. Both sides. Both sides. He forced big tech to show their hand as they are very clearly doing right now. If you're not seeing it, you're missing it. It's happening. It's real. It's disgusting and terrifying all at the same time. But the system's been exposed. These people, whether it's DC elite, politicians, big corporations, big tech, they don't, they always, they're really good about saying it. But they don't care about you. They don't care about America. They care about themselves. They've got a, a system and a game that props them up and doesn't help us. It just doesn't. And it doesn't matter what side you're on. You should see it that way. There's very few, and there's, there's some good ones, but there's very few politicians in D.C. who are actually representing their constituents, owning up to their promises. Now they get there, and, and some of them started off with great intentions, but you get there, you get caught up in the machine, and then it becomes about you, your career, your job. Where can I butter my bread next? Oh, here, I'll, oh, I'll get some money there. I'll do this. It doesn't help us. It helps them. It helps them tremendously. But he exposed that. So again, you know, whether you think he was presidential or not, or whether you think he did it the right way or not, okay, there's certainly room for debate there. But the outcome, the results that came, some of them were astonishing. Are there areas that he could have done better? Absolutely. Name a president who doesn't fall in that category. But there was some amazing stuff done. Again, he wasn't perfect. No one is. But he, he just, he got a ton done for America and for Americans. America's under attack and they're all around us. I'm talking about liberal Democrats and they're out to destroy everything that we've worked so hard for. Mammoth Nation's here to fight for you. You only get one vote, so let's join forces. We support conservative lawmakers in the causes you hold so dearly. We stand behind our police veterans, the Second Amendment, and much more. We need your help, so join today.